Hey, Mike the Scrapping Guy here with another video tutorial. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create one of those cork boards. I'm sure you've seen them. They're the kinds that you can actually use push pins and, and pin up uh, notes or pictures or grocery lists or, or those kind of things. And what we're going to do is we're going to create this cork board. And uh, you can either use it for an actual digital layout, like the background paper is a digital layout. Or you can even use it as an embellishment if you want to add a cork board to a particular layout that you're working on. So in Photoshop Element 7, it's actually fairly easy to do. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the steps that it will take. Now what I have here, I have a regular graphic uh, opened up, a blank graphic. And I'm going to go over to my color swatches. And I'm going to choose the top color swatch. I'm going to double click it. And what I want to do is pick kind of a tan looking color. Here we go. All right, it's up to you. You can change the colors around and, and um, pick whatever one you want. If you don't you get the results you want uh, the first time, you can always change it. So I'm just going to go pick a color, something like that in there. Actually making it make a little bit lighter. Hit OK. And I have my background layer selected. I'm going to go over to my paint bucket tool. And I'm just going to click to make this entire graphic that color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my special effects window. I'm going to hit the FX button on the right there. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for something called grain. And here it is right here. Here's the effect called grain. And I'm going to go and just left mouse button, uh, push the left mouse button down and I'm going to drag it over to my design. As you can see, it kind of made a bigger window than uh, what you can see. So let me uh, shorten it out here so you can see what I'm working on. And if you look over here, it did some, put some kind of grain, but that's not the, really the grain that we're looking for. I'm going to go over to my grain type. I'm going to choose clumped. And you can see that it kind of made it a little bit blurry. And you can adjust the intensity and, and do some adjustments over here if you'd like, if you don't like the exact uh, uh, effect that it was giving you. But this is kind of the, the start. So we're going to go ahead and hit grain there. And I'm going to go over, I'm going to hit OK. And there we have our grain pattern. Now I'm going to go back over to my effects window. I'm going to scroll up and I'll go to uh, Cracular. So I'm going to go and I'm going to drag that over also. And let me shrink this down so you can see it. There we go. Now you can see it kind of put those little cracks and things in there that kind of makes it look like a cork board. And what we could do is we can make adjustments with it also as far as the depth, uh, the spacing, and various things. And these are all up to you. And you can kind of mess around with the adjustments. You know, try one uh, one set of settings, and then if you don't like it, go back and uh, try another set, and keep going to your de you know to the desire that you like. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna hit OK. And now, if we zoom in on this a little bit, you can see that it is gonna start looking kind of like a cork board part of it. So let me go zoom it back out. Now what I want to do is I want to make, maybe make the color a little bit uh, a little bit different. So I'm going to go up to the enhance, and the first thing I'm going to do is hit adjust color, adjust hue and saturation. I'm going to change it just a slight bit. Let me see if I brighten up a little bit, to make it a little bit uh, lighter also. There we go. So, so in case you did pick a color that you didn't really like, you can also, uh, at the beginning, you can just go ahead and adjust the hue and saturation to get it more to what your uh, liking is. So we'll go ahead and leave it like that. That looks pretty good. Now one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of mess with the lighting a little bit. If you've ever looked at cork boards, they're really not a uniform color here. There's always some little discrepancies with the brightness and, and uh, in color. So in order to do that I'm going to go over to my burn tool. Now you might have selected automatically the sponge tool. So just hold down the mouse, mouse button, go down and click the burn tool. And then you can go up and you can, I'd make a fairly large brush out of it. And you want it to be kind of a soft focused uh, uh, brush also, kind of a feathered look to make it a little bit bigger. And what's going to happen as you left, hit the left mouse button, it's going to kind of darken the image a little bit where your mouse is going. And well, the other thing you want to do too before you do that actually is go up to your exposure. Now it might be already set at 100. I don't like to do 100. I like to do things in moderation. So yeah, I would usually drop it down to 50. So here we go. Kind of do our little edges here. Just add a little bit of um, different kind of color to it. 
give it a little more realistic look. That looks pretty good there. So now we have the basis of our cork board almost working, or almost finished. So what I want to do now is I'm actually going to create a, a frame that goes around the cork board. If you've ever seen them, they always have those wooden frames going around them. And that's very easy to do also. What I'm going to do is go over to my layers. I'm going to create a new layer, make sure it's on top of the background. And I'm going to go over to my rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to go inside, and using the rollers, you can uh, sometimes measure them. I'm going to go up and choose maybe like a half an inch or quarter of an inch in. And I'm going to go all the way down to once again a quarter inch at the top and a quarter inch at the bottom, so it's uniform. Okay, so we have our marching ants going around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the outside of this. So right now if I did any kind of change, any kind of uh, painting or anything, it would actually happen on the inside. And I only want to work on the outside. So what I can do is go up to select and hit inverse. And now you'll see there's marching ants on the edge of the graphic along with the ones on the inside. So now anything that I do is actually going to happen on the inside uh, or in between these sets of marching ants. So I'm going to go over to my color swatch, click on the top one or double click on the top one. I'm going to hit kind of a lighter tan. And this is going to be the color of the wood that's going to be going around. And then I can go up to edit, fill selection, make sure foreground color is the uh, selected here. Hit OK. And it fills in between these marching ants the uh, lighter tan color, which would be our border. But we want to go one step further. We want it to actually look like wood. So I'm going to go up to Filter. I'm going to go to Noise. I'm going to hit Add Noise. And once again, it's looking at the center. So I'm going to kind of scroll this down so we can kind of see the noise it's, uh, that it's creating. And right now, you probably don't have it selected. But if, uh, you want to make sure that what's called monochromatic is selected. So click on that. Otherwise, you're going to have the different colors in there, the reds and the greens and various things. We just want it to be kind of plain. So hit monochromatic. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to add one more filter to make that look really like wood. I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. And what we want to do is we want the angle to be 0. So it's going straight across like this. Let me drag this down. And you can see we have these, looks like a wood grain fibers going through there. And you can adjust the distance um, to whatever setting you'd like. You can kind of try it out different settings. That looks pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to hit Control D to deselect everything. And let's take a look at it. Let me zoom in. Kind of take a look at the wood. That looks pretty good. Now, there's another effect that we want to do to make it look even better is we're going to create, if you ever look at wood, uh, they always have the angled edges where the two pieces come together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw those on there. So let me just go and hit my color swatch again. This time I'm going to part, pick another darker color. Let's say right around here. And I'm going to go over to my line tool. Go down to the line tool. And depending on the resolution of your uh, original graphic, you can adjust the weight. What I would do is try uh, try one of them and see if it's the right size. I have mine set at 10 for the weight. And what I'm going to do is go from one corner up to the other corner. Draw that there. And actually, let me undo, let me undo that because I don't think I got the actual edge. Let me try to zoom in on it here. Go back to my line tool, grab this corner, go right up to that one. Looks pretty good. And what you see is on the right hand side it says shape. Uh, it creates a shape layer. And what we want it to be, we don't want it to be an actual shape, we want it to be a regular rasterized looking layer. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to click simplify. So it looks like a regular graphic uh, piece there rather than a shape. And I'm going to go over to this corner do the same thing. Once again it turns it a shape layer. Hit simplify. Go down from that corner to that one. Hit simplify. And over to here also 
from there to there and hit simplify now let me zoom out a little bit that looks pretty good now there's one last effect that we want to add to this to really give it look uh, make it look like a cork board and that's to add a shadow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the layer that is the border that goes around the wooden border and I'm going to go up into my effects and I'm going to go over to here which is the drop shadows and I'm going to drag it down onto that board or that corner or um, the border sorry and here we have a drop shadow kind of going around that looks pretty good but I'm going to double click the FX next to it because I want to kind of increase the size and the distance a little bit kind of get it going around really give it that kind of 3D look and you can also adjust the angle a little bit also if you need to depending on how it's already set up on you and hit OK and there we go there's our cork board that we can now go ahead and add photos or uh, lists or whatever your digital layout uh, requires and what I'm going to do just for fun I'm going to go ahead and add a photo to it so I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to hit open up a picture and grab one here I'm going to drag it onto my cork board and let me adjust the size a little bit here now I could just leave it like that but that really doesn't have a, a really cool effect what I want to do is I'm going to put a white uh, border going around it to make it kind of look like a Polaroid and then I'll create a couple of little pieces of tape on there to, like we uh, taped it up there so in order to do this what I need to do is I'm just going to duplicate this layer which is um, over here in fact you know what I'm going to I'm going to drag it up to the top just so it's the top layer to begin with there we go and I'm going to take this layer I'm going to go over and drag it onto the new, create new layer little icon there and you'll see we now have a duplicate of these layers so I want to click on the layer that's below it because that's the bottom layer and you can see it's selected and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control click on the little icon there what that does is that puts the little marching ants going around selecting just that graphic and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose white as my top swatch color I'm going to go edit fill selection and now we have the white going around uh, white filled in inside of the photograph and what I can do now is I can move it down and kind of make a border around to make some adjustments here so I get it right there let me zoom in on it a little bit oh, let me select it let me zoom in on it a little bit let me go back to it here try to get these a little bit even there we go and what I could do to, to make sure that these two uh, work together is I'm going to go and make sure that layer is selected, the white one. I'm going to hit the shift key, click the top layer, which is the photograph. And then I'm going to right click those two layers and hit merge layers. So now this is actually one element that I can work with and I can spin and do these other types of things. So now we got that photograph created. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hit control D to deselect it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create my little pieces of tape that we can put on there. So I'm going to go over to my rectangular tool. I'm going to go and create a new layer, the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just going to draw kind of a little bit of a marquee. In fact, you know what, before I do that, let me zoom in so you guys can see that. Here we go again. Just kind of grab it to make it look like it's a piece of tape or actually the size of a piece of tape. It might be kind of hard to see the marching ants there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of a, a, a light yellow. There we go. And then I'm back up to my edit, fill selection with the foreground color. And there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Control D to deselect it. And I'm going to go over to my erase tool. And I'm going to pick kind of a small size. 
it's a straight edge. Maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. And let me zoom in a little bit. Back to my eraser. And I'm just going to kind of erase out, almost like if it was a piece of tape that was torn off the spool on the edges, on the ends. Go over to this side, kind of do the same thing, just make some random cuts and turns there. There we go. Let me zoom back out again. You might be saying, that just looks like a white block. It doesn't look anything like a piece of tape. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bring it down to that corner. And I'm going to spin it like so. And then I'm going to change the opacity. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So there it starts looking like a piece of transparent tape. And what I'm going to do now that that's uh, created, I'm going to go and I'm going to duplicate it so I don't have to do it again. So now we have two of them. And I'm going to bring this one over and I'm going to spin this one. Kind of bring it down this way. There we go. Now let me zoom out. We'll take a look at it. How about that? Looks like it's taped on there. And I'm going to add one last little effect. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to select the photograph. Back over to my drop shadows. And I just want to add a little bit of a drop shadow to that photograph. And if I want to make a little adjustments, I can do that here also. Just to get a little bit of a depth to that photo. And what I can do, if I like the way that tape is set up, I can go and I can have that photo selected. Hold the shift key down. Click on the two layers of the tape. And I can merge those ones uh, also. And now the entire thing is set up. And I can do whatever I want with that. So there you have it. There's a real easy way to make a cork board that you can use as an embellishment for your layout, if that's just part of your layout, or have it as the actual background for your layout to begin with. So there you have it. I hope you have fun and enjoy making your cork board.